Hi. The Etsy family <laughs> video too. Okay. Now, uh, Uncle John did not have any kids. So his wife couldn't have any. I remember <coughs> her name was Marie, Marie Mkhashin. She was his cousin. Uh, I remember she was most of the time, at least in the morning, playing cards. They played pinochle. And when they needed a fourth player, they would call on my mother. Hey, Josephine, come, come down here and play. We need you. So she would go downstairs and play. Now, Marie was uh, very often outspoken and very critical. And she used some, well, uh, dirty language that my Uncle John couldn't stand. <laughs> so, <laughs> he used to get mad at her, but sometimes he, 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 he roughed her up. So anyways, <clears throat> she passed away from a heart attack. And <clears throat> that was after we had moved <clears throat> to Beirut. Then he remarried and he had his first boy. That was a great event. Now, <clears throat> with the arrival of Amin, that's the name of his first son, my cousin, he started <clears throat> worrying about <laughs> uh, his financial situation because he had spent most of his money on charitable work, helping the Catholic Armenian community of Damascus. He bought for them a church. Actually, he bought the place from the Jesuit priests he bought that old building with its church. Then he added a school. Then he built an auditorium and so on and so forth. So every time, you know, uh, he kept pouring in money to help the community. Now, I think that the community took advantage of him. <laughs> they honored him, they did things for him, and said that he became a famous person. Uh, and this way they were able to, what should I say, I wouldn't say swindle, because <laughs> they enticed him into <clears throat> giving more and more money. But by the time Amin was born, the factory had been uh, taken by the government. The socialist Syrian government uh, <clears throat> nationalized the factory. So my uncles Nain and Habib were out of lost their source of income. And it was too late for them to start new business they are, because they were already advanced in age. So they had to live from their <clears throat> savings. Now John uh, had spent most of his money on charitable work. 
So the only way he could find something to save was through his Pamdun summer home. He had built a summer home in Lebanon, Pamdun, Lebanon. And that summer home was put 50% in his name and 50% in his wife's name, Marie. She insisted on that. She wanted something in her name. Okay. She passed away and her heirs <coughs> expected to get the, her, her share from that house. But my Uncle John decided that after he got married and had a boy, he would renege on his gift to his former wife and take back the whole house for himself and for his children. So that was the only way for him to recoup some of his money. Now, Uncle John went to Beirut and saw my brother Pierre. Pierre had just graduated from law school and had become a lawyer. So he wanted him to initiate a legal action, a lawsuit, in order to take back the other 50% that was put in the name of his former wife, Marie. That was a very unusual lawsuit. My brother Pierre consulted other lawyers and they told him, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's not done, <laughs> you know. But Uncle John insisted. He, he said, I don't want to negotiate with my former wife's family. I don't want to give them anything because he had become mad at them. <laughs> yeah, he was tough-tempered, you know. If you uh, don't treat him right, he will get mad at you. So anyway, my brother started the lawsuit and won the case for him. That was, for my brother Pierre, something <laughs> totally uh, unusual. You know, he was proud of his accomplishment. And he told me the story himself when I was in Beirut. He told me how Uncle John insisted he would not give them a penny because Pierre had, bought, had gone to Damascus to see the Christian family and try to <coughs> find a solution to the problem, an amicable solution. So they were already prepared to accept some compensation. So Pierre came back and told John about it. <laughs> no way, we don't want to give him a penny. So he had to go through this, the lawsuit and it was in Lebanon, in Beirut, a first case that became known as Etsy against Mkhashin. All right, so <clears throat> this shows how <clears throat> Uncle John um, tried to do something for his children. He wanted <clears throat> to fund their education and fund their <clears throat> you know, leave them something to live on for his wife, Jose, and, and for his four boys. Now, Charlie, the youngest of my cousins, his youngest boy, 
ask me to write a book about his dad. So I investigated the things and stuff like that. There was not enough material to write a book, really. And I was not what in the mood of investigating things in the detail because most of things were very clear. He spent most of his money on the Damascus uh, Armenian Catholic Church and their new compound. He bought it from the Jesuit order and built a school and an auditorium for them. So maybe this will be a way for Charlie to get some information about his dad. He really worried about them and he loved them dearly. But the problem is that, uh, well, uh, he was too advanced in age and the kids did not have a chance to get to know him before he passed away. So that was, uh, what should I say, a tragic event for the kids. But on the other hand, I can understand Uncle John's wish to remarry and have kids in his old age. Now, nothing is perfect. Everything is so-so in this life. There are pros and cons, and we have to take things as we can, as best we can. All right, I will stop here and think of something else for next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>